Hey everyone, Couch Investor here with another video for you today. In today's video, we're going to talk about everything Disney related, Disney Plus, the theme parks, the impact the outbreak has had on the stock, and my opinion on whether or not it's a good stock to have in your portfolio for the future. We're going to go over the graphs as well, so stay tuned for that. Most of the topics and questions that I will try and answer in this video have actually been asked by you, the viewers, in my community tab. So if you have any future questions or something, please go check the community tab because I will probably post there before I publish my next video if you want me to cover something specific. Now before I get into that, I want to thank everyone that has been subscribing lately. We've reached 2000 subscribers, so thank you very much. And if you haven't subscribed yet, maybe now is the time to hit that subscribe button. And if you like the videos, maybe leave it an early thumbs up as well as it really helps me out grow the channel. So without further ado, let's dive into this. All right, so first up, we'll talk about Disney+. Plus. Disney+, Plus started to roll out end of last year. First day, it amassed 10 million subscribers. In February, it was already at 28 million subscribers. And now in May, it was reported there were over 54 million subscribers on the platform which is huge for Disney and it will only grow more and more. In June, they rolled out Disney Plus in Japan. That will follow with the Nordics countries, Belgium, Luxembourg, Portugal, I think in September. And then towards the end of the year, more of Latin America. So you could expect an exponential growth in subscribers. It won't surprise me if by the end of 2020, there were over 70 million subscribers. The only negative thing I have to say about Disney Plus right now is that well, it's, it's very cheap for an investor point of view. I think the revenue per paid user is under $6. We can see here a comparison between all the streaming platforms and their prices. We can see that Disney is one of the lowest priced streaming content platforms. So it might be something positive, but for now it's, it's fairly cheap maybe to attract new customers and they might increase their prices like Netflix has been doing for the last couple of years because as of right now i don't think a revenue of less than six dollars per paid users is very sustainable especially if they want to be profitable by 2023 that's my next point we've got a goldman upgrade on the stock they've actually upgraded the rating to a buy with a price target of 137 at the time of making this video we're at 118 dollars so that's an increase of almost 15 percent Goldman's upgrade is actually based on two aspects. One, that the platform will reach 150 million subscribers by 2025 and be profitable by 2021 and not by 2023 because they think the growth will be uh, much faster because of the outbreak that is happening right now. Moreover, on the first point, the 150 million subscribers by 2025 is still less than what Netflix has today. Netflix today has 100. 81 million subscribers, but both companies have the same market cap of around 214, 250 billion dollars. That would mean that if, let's say, Disney reaches Netflix subscriber counts that it is today, you could add, theoretically, Netflix market cap to Disney's total market cap if that reaches that number in the future, which would mean that the stock will potentially double in the next couple of years. One of the reasons why they expect so many subscribers by 2025 is because of cord cutting in the US. Cord cutting has been accelerating in the last couple of years because why would people want to pay hundreds of dollars for cable TV if they can pay under $10 for a streaming service like Disney or $12, $10 for something like Hulu or Netflix. All right, so next up is the content debate. How does Disney's budget compare to Netflix, for example? Well, Netflix for 2020 has a budget of $16 billion, which is insane. It's by far the biggest budget out there. But again, Netflix has been doing this for a while, so we expect a budget as big as that. I'll go even further on that point. Netflix said that they have enough content until 2021 if they can't start filming for other content to be streamed on their platform. Disney Plus, for example, has a budget of only $1.5 to $1.7 billion for 2020. But again, they've acquired 21st Century Fox last year, so that's why their budget is quite slim. But that does not mean that there won't be new content on the streaming platform. Actually, there will be a lot of new content coming to the streaming platform. By new, I mean potential old Disney movies, maybe TV shows from Fox, from Marvel future Marvel TV shows such as The Falcon and Winter Soldier or 
season two of The Mandalorian, one of the most watched TV shows on their platform. Obviously, they also have Hulu, ESPN, but we're going to cover ESPN a bit later. And one of the perks of being Disney is that it owns the rights to so many things. One of them is Hamilton, the Broadway show. So that went on Disney Plus streaming platform the weekend of the 4th of July. During that, during that time, the Disney Plus app has been downloaded over 750,000 times, which is an increase of 74% just on that weekend alone. Now, we still don't know how many new subscribers they have gained from that specific Hamilton weekend, but my best guess would be a lot. All right, next up, we have the theme parks, one of the most popular topics you wanted me to cover. So actually, last year, this segment was the one that has grown the most. It's accountable for 37% of their revenue. Their revenue last year was around $69 billion. But as you might know, all of the Disney parks were closed at one point this year. We can see here that on January 25th, Shanghai, Disney closed. Then one day after, Hong Kong. In February, Tokyo closed. In March, Disneyland in Paris closed their doors. And then every Disney park after that closed as well. But we've seen some parks already reopen their doors, such as Shanghai, Tokyo, Paris. Those were the first one to reopen their doors. Hong Kong as well, but Hong Kong will now close their doors again because of the increase in cases in that area. All of the parks that are reopening obviously will not have a 100% capacity. The max cap will be 50%. Most of them will be at 30% from the start, maybe 25%. Uh, in the States right now, in Florida and in California, most of the parks will reopen at 25%, 30% capacity, which would mean for Magic Kingdom, that would be 25,000 visitors per day because their daily average usually is over 57,000 visitors per day. Obviously, not all the visitors are there at the same time. So those are just average numbers and theoretical numbers. Some people weren't very happy with Disney reopening their parks because of safety issues. Some of you may die, but it's a sacrifice I am willing to make. Anyways, I think if you have security measures and safety measures, everybody wears a mask, there's social distancing, etc. I think they could reopen with 30%, 25% capacity. There shouldn't be a problem at all. Now, it is reported that Disney could lose up to $1 billion each month that the parks are closed. Again, another big issue right there. But with some parks reopening, like we said, between 25% and 50%, that number could change drastically in my opinion plus the fact that the nba finals and playoffs will be played at disneyland that could generate more revenue for disney it is reported that it would cost the league 150 million dollars or 1.5 million per day plus i would expect a rise in numbers watching espn during the playoffs and the finals which could mean again more subscribers for disney plus so they will probably find a couple of ways to generate more revenue. And like we said, Disney theme parks were the biggest segments for Disney's revenue last year. I would expect Disney Plus to be one of their biggest revenue generating segments in the next couple of years. And that will eventually compensate for the losses that they've endured this year. But I still think they will continue to bleed until for sure the end of 2021. Now to continue on that note of having to survive until the end of 2021, maybe beginning 2022, what's the impact that the outbreak has had on the company? Well, first of all, Disney has a pretty healthy balance sheet, I would say. We can see here that the liabilities and their current assets, well, it's almost a two to one ratio, which is very good to see. Again, we can see an increase in, in intangible assets, which is Disney Plus. It's actually a huge increase. In difficult times, you would like to see companies have big cash positions. As we can see here, Disney has raised tons of cash between Q1 and Q2. They've cut their semi-annual dividend payments for now, which could raise them up to $1.8 billion. And if that wasn't enough, they've raised another $11 billion in senior notes with maturity between 2026 and 2060, I believe. In my opinion, Disney has enough cash 
to survive 2021, even if the parks will not reopen to its fullest capacity. And I would expect Disney Plus sold their direct to customer segment in their revenue to be growing even further year over year and eventually maybe become even the biggest segment in their revenue in the next couple of years. Now let's look quickly at the graphs and let's conclude the video. All right, let's look at the graphs real quick. We can see that the uptrend line has been respected perfectly. Now, right here, August 4th is earnings, so keep an eye on that. Now, this area right here I will be buying is at $100. If we ever make it back down there, I highly doubt it. But otherwise, there is a little resistance here at $120. And then if we can make that a support for the short term, the next resistance will be at $128 or so, which is an increase of almost $6. But until earnings, I would expect us to go sideways and earnings should be right here. The difference between the short-term support and resistance is 10%. So if you can stomach that volatility, because you never know, it could go down, then bounce back up. Positive earnings could mean that the stock will go up to the resistance point. Negative earnings, well, obviously would see the stock maybe go down to $110, but I still don't feel that there would be so much bad news because the expectations are pretty low. But again, if you're okay with short-term volatility, I think for the long term, Disney is a must-have in your portfolio. You can see here the stock traded at over $150 back in November and December because of the success of Disney+. Plus. Right, so if you're still debating on whether or not you want to open a position into Disney stock, I would suggest you to wait maybe to, for earnings and see what happens there. But still, I would not expect positive earnings. I would like to see what their projections are actually for fiscal year 2021 and maybe see more subscribers on Disney's Plus platform. If we can see a huge increase in subscribers, I would expect the stock to move upwards. Again, I would like to point out that I hold Disney stock and if it will go down to around $100 mark, I will be adding to my position, but that's a big if I don't see the stock going back down to the $100 mark anytime soon, but you never know. So that will be it for this video. If you liked it, consider leaving a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, maybe now is the time to hit that subscribe button and keep an eye on the community tab as I will be asking you guys more and more questions on topics that you want me to cover. And as always, guys, take care, stay safe, and see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.